So this week's lesson is all about the components of feed. So first of all, um, just what they say, animal feed equals water and dry matter. So all animal feed that we actually give our animals, whether it's uh, lucerne or the hay from lucerne, is usually there's water on the inside and also everything that is dry on the inside. So the dry matter itself um, is organic and inorganic material, meaning everything that contains carbon and those things that do not contain carbon, if you recall from last year. So then the organic components usually that we find in food are things like your carbohydrates because they have, um, carb, have carbon in it. So your carbohydrates are like starch, sugars and fiber. All animals kind of need to absorb these. It's very good for the intestines. And then secondly, there's proteins, inorganic uh, com uh, components, and then vitamins and fats as well. So all these four elements, the carbons, proteins, vitamins and fats, they have carbon in them. And then your inorganic components of any dry matter or any dry feed that animal actually takes in has macro and micro minerals. So meaning any minerals that animals eat, we either they either need in bulk in a large quantity, that's your macro minerals, or in uh, small quantities, so your micro minerals. So then we move on to also still components of feed. We just mentioned water and dry matter, so let's start with the water. So mainly, this picture of fine shows a human drinking water, but the same thing is true for all animals. They need water to survive. So first of all, the functions. Luckily this year, you guys don't have to focus so much on the chemical structure or the chemical compounds like last year and knowing what they look like and what are all the elements that bind to one another. But this year, it's important to know all the functions. So basically, you use last year's information about all the, the detail of what the proteins and the fats and all those things look like, but you have to remember this year the functions. So first of all, the water, it boosts the immune system. Secondly, the me it is a medium for chemical reaction. So without water, uh, nutrients and all these things can't be um, transported through the body. So that's actually a third thing that can happen. It transports all the nutrients, but also any chemical reactions like digestion happens inside water. I mean, look at the picture there with the water in the person's stomach. So without the water in the stomach, it's also going to struggle or the body is going to struggle to digest any food. And thirdly, it also helps to hydrolyze food. So this technically means digestion because hydrolysis is just a fancy word to say water is being used to digest food. They also is there to help absorb and, like I mentioned, transport food molecules all through the body to the cells that need it, whether it's in the arms or the legs or the head or where it's needed. Then lastly, it also regulates the body's pH. As in the picture there, we have water inside the stomach, and the stomach usually, for humans, is around pH 3. And I think one of the previous videos, we said that in a, a mono Usually for a monogastric animal, the pH of their stomach is pH 2. So the water plays an integral role of actually regulating that pH. Then also, you guys will have to know how to figure out the moisture content of feed. It's really not that difficult. So the main thing is to remember the equation. Start at the top. The moisture percentage equals all the wet sample weight. So meaning with the moisture, we actually use the weight of the feed. So here we put in, if my mouse will, mouse will work, the weight uh, feed, so whatever it weighs, let's say you've got lucerne, uh, it weighs 5 kgs, this is where you'll put the weight feed, minus the dry feed, so if it was weighed again after it has been laying in the sun and it's dried out now, uh, you minus that weight over here, then you divide it by the weight sample weight, so the first weight you use twice, then you multiply with 100 because we want the percentage, so, so the moisture percentage times 100 gives you that. So here's a nice example exactly out of your textbooks. Uh, so five kilograms of wet hay weighed four kilograms after air dried. So if you were to put this into this equation, you'll say five kilograms of your wet feed minus the four kilograms. Then you divide it by the wet feed. So that's five kgs times 100. So, okay, what does this tell us? 20% of the feed was actually wet. So then they say the dry hay has a 15% crude protein content. Don't worry so much about the CP and the crude protein. Just 15% of this feed is protein. That's basically what it means. So then they say how much protein, basically, would the animal actually absorb? So how much was taken into the body? Uh, some of the protein could have been uh, gone through the digestive system as feces. Some of it was actually absorbed. So we want to know what was absorbed. So 
moisture content quite simple when it's 20 percent but luckily with this example you actually don't have to figure this out because they already gave you what the um, dry hay was so if this entire question was just about asking the percentage yes fine you'll have to do this but technically for like the dry matter you don't have to actually use the moisture because we already know that four kilograms is what is dry so if you do the dry matter to figure out what is dry you'd say the weight times the rest so 100 percent minus 20 gives you 80 percent if you know 20 percent is what was weight had moisture obviously the rest up until you get to 100 percent is going to be dry so 20% is weight, 80% then is what is dry. So if you want to figure out the new weight, you say the weight um, hay times 80%, which is supposed to be the dry percentage. So 4% then is going to be the dry feed. But luckily this step technically you wouldn't really have to do because we have the dry feed. Okay, but then the um, crude protein in your dry feed, you would say four kilograms times 15% because this is what they say is the crude protein content so we want to know how much of this four kilogram really sorry I'm hiccuping how much of this four kilogram hay the dry hay really has protein so we have to eliminate the weight content so four kilograms times 15% gives us 0.6 kilogram which actually has the protein so 0.6 kilogram is protein and it is retained from the five kilogram hay so if out of everything you've actually given the animal only 0.6 um, kilograms of weight was the protein and it seems very little but if you take in to consideration that only 15 percent of it was protein in the first place it kind of makes sense if let's say the protein content was 80 percent this will be much higher so then your, your animal would actually get much more protein in and that's technically what you want the animal to eat you know get a lot of protein but okay this basically is just example in the textbook is just to show you guys how to actually get the moisture content so this is kind of important know the equation how to get that and later on we'll talk a bit more about crude protein content and dry matter and so on but this is just an example to show how to use this when to use this so if you were to try and find out the protein inside the dry feed you need to figure out the dry feed first okay then just very quick we did proteins last year so just functions of proteins again this is just for recap sake so all proteins have an amino group in h2 it has a side chain and a carboxyl group again no need to draw this again this year that was last year's business so now the functions it all proteins repairs damaged tissue we need it for muscle building then in enzymes, some of them function as enzymes. So they help with digestion in the body of animals, also humans. Then some proteins are hormones, so they can actually trigger specific chemical responses or reactions to happen. Lastly, it acts as reserve energy. So if all fats in the body and um, all sugars, carbohydrates have been burned and the animal needs more energy to move around, they can actually use protein. So in this case, it's quite bad. You don't want this to happen because otherwise the animal will lose muscle mass. And then for a farmer, this is bad because there is less meat uh, on the animal. And again, less meat means less weight, means less money for the farmer. Then very lastly, uh, the very important for monogastric animals. So the protein is very important for monogastric animals because they need to ingest proteins to actually build proteins. Whereas if you have the ruminants like cows, they actually don't eat protein. I mean, that we said we covered this, they only eat grass and uh, wet feed of the felt. So they don't eat protein, they just eat fiber. So what the bacteria does in the rumen for the cow is actually it creates, we talked about NPN, non-protein, um, non-nitrogen protein. So basically they use anything else or other nitrogen elements from other foodstuffs to actually make protein for the for the cattle or the ruminants. So they don't have to eat protein, but it's very important for your monogastric animals. They need to ingest protein. Then we look at carbohydrates, so a component of feed. Some examples to include here is glucose, starch, which is in most of your plant material. Glycogen is actually an animal type of uh, carbohydrate, which we as humans and other animals find in their bodies. 
or at least in their bodies anyway, and they include fiber like cellulose and lignin, which you find in plant material as well. So that's what animals usually ingest or the ruminants ingest. Then just to recap, again, just for interest sake, this is what your glucose, are. well, glucose, and I think fructose, this one, but anyway, uh, is what they look like. So it's normally your ring chains, and this indicates that it's a carbohydrate, it's a sugar, so two sugar molecules. So again, just for interest sake, but then the functions are important, it's a source of energy, it releases heat as well in the body of this animal that eats it, it's also stored as fat if the body does not need it, and lastly, the crude fiber helps peristalsis. So this is true for both your ruminants and monogastric animals, they need to ingest crude fiber like cellulose and lignin, so plant materials, to help with the movement of the food through the digestive tract. And also remember peristalsis is the movement or the contraction and relaxation of all your intestines. So the muscles of the intestines, they constrict and, and relax. So that's basically peristalsis to move the food along. So we actually need the fiber to help with that. And then also fats and oils are the last one. So again, just for interest sake, your fats and oils, they usually have an alcohol group and if you have a couple of uh, fats bound together or fatty acids it forms an ester bond coo and this is what your glycerol molecule looks like so usually all fats contain glycerol one glycerol molecule and usually three fatty acid molecules in the functions it is the main source of energy for any animal it protects the organs so usually you've got um, even humans have a fat layer around our organs to protect them. It also insulates the body, so it keeps our bodies warm if we have a layer of fat underneath the skin. Then also it's a component of all cell membranes. We won't actually have cells if there were no fats in our bodies. Then lastly, it also repels water off of wool and feathers. So this is usually why a duck can swim in water. Uh, a chicken sure can probably stand in the rain for like a while because again the feathers do have this oily um, substance on their uh, feathers, especially birds as well, other birds. But obviously they will eventually get drenched if they are in the water for too long. And interest interesting as well for sheep with wool. They will also have this oily layer on the outside. So again if they stand in a bit of rain for a little while the water just goes off of the wool, technically, or rolls off the wool. That's why we say repels water. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for this lesson.